So I want to start this video off with prayer because I'm going to be discussing something that happened either really early this year or late last year. So it's been a while and I really need God to help me to remember everything because I feel like he wants me to share this and um, I haven't done it yet. So, dear Father in heaven, I just pray in the name of Jesus that you will help me, Father, to say what you want me to say um, in this video, Father. Please help these words not to fall on deaf ears, but the people to gain inside knowledge of what it is that you want them to know, Father, and to heed whatever it is that you are saying to the people through me, Father. I pray that you will help me to say the right things in this video and give me um, not only understanding, wisdom, knowledge, God, but help my memory as I am trying to recall everything that happened because I did not write it down. Um, I pray these things, dear Father in heaven, in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Okay, so I did a video where I discussed how I went to hell. Um, please go and see that video if you haven't seen it. I'm not going to go over it in this video. But for anyone that has not been to hell, they don't understand how horrific an experience that is. Okay. Um, many messengers have been to hell. We may speak without shaky voices, but um, it's a horrific experience. So in this video, I want to discuss how I recovered from that. Jesus Christ actually visited me, so um, I'm going to just start from the beginning. I was laying in the bed one day, sleeping. And as soon as I woke up, I had two angels come to me. As soon as I sat up in a bed, waking up for the day, two angels came to me, one on my left side and one on my right side, and they showed me on my forehead. They showed me through their eyes um, in the spiritual realm how on my forehead said 100% for the Lord. And um, then they backed up. And Jesus came in the middle. He, he came and stood in the middle. And so um, he said to me, as clear as day, he said, Bethlehem and Judah have been warned of my coming, but they won't listen. Okay, I'll say it again. Bethlehem and Judah have been warned of my coming, but they won't listen. Then he immediately took me into heaven, he started to show me a play-by-play -play of Lucifer's life. And I believe he did that because I was so traumatized because of my experience in hell, um, being that close to Satan. And please go see it if you haven't. And I think um, that God just wanted to show me Lucifer's life, and that helped me. It actually ended up helping me to recover from it. So he took me into heaven, and back in, in the past, he showed me how before he created man, he was in the throne room, and he was thinking, and he was going over all the atrocities that would take place. And like I said, this was before he created man, and I saw into his mind, I saw, he let me see into his mind what he was thinking, and he was just looking into the future, and he was seeing all the all the different atrocities, and it was horrific, uh, the bombings. Uh, I remember specifically seeing a nuclear bomb and um, different horrific things that was happening. And so um, Lucifer came in. When Lucifer, as Lucifer was coming in, that's when I saw a female angel. At, well, she looked like a female, but the angels really don't have gender, so um, I can talk about that more, but that's not the point of this video. I've seen many angels. But anyway, she looked female, so I call her she. And as he came into the throne room, she looked at him and she smiled like a, like a goofy smile, like she really liked Lucifer. 
and um, he just looked at her and just kind of half smiled, and then he walked towards Jesus, and um, I'll tell you what Lucifer looked like in a, in a second, not with him. So anyway, he came over, and um, he went to went to uh went to Jesus and Jesus was just you know sighing and he had leaned over like he like he almost fell and Lucifer just supporting him and was like um you know what's going on it it looked like Lucifer was coming in to report on something and he seen Jesus do that and G then Jesus let me see what was in his mind he was thinking you know that he can make a better leader than, than Jesus. He was thinking Jesus was weak. He was like, you know, look at him. He didn't know what Jesus was. Jesus did not reveal to him what he was thinking about, but he revealed it to me. Because Jesus was seeing all of the atrocities that would come because of Lucifer. And um, Lucifer didn't know it at that point. So anyway, he um, began to see, see that and he thought Lucifer was weak. Okay, then I was advanced to another scene. And I saw Jesus, and I was not allowed to see who Jesus was talking to, but Jesus let me see that Lucifer was standing right there. Okay, um, let me say uh, real quick what Lucifer looks like before I forget. When I saw Lucifer in heaven, I would say he looked like he was five seven, five eight, white man with black hair. He was not tall. I was really surprised by that. I mean, he. Compared to Jesus and compared to, and I've seen Jesus face to face and, you know, I've seen Jesus is 210 feet tall because that was what came in my spirit. It said 210 feet tall, but I've seen Jesus also, um, one time he was in my house, he stood right in front of me and he was about six feet tall, I would say. So, um, I have seen him in different heights, um. But Lucifer was was shorter than him. He looked like he was five seven five eight. Just comparing him to Jesus, and also that's what came in my spirit. I was like five seven five eight. So anyway, um, so Jesus said, "Let us make man in our own image." And um, he was saying that, and Lucifer was just standing right there, not saying that he was saying that to Lucifer, okay? But he was saying it to, and you could in the vision you could see that he was saying it to someone. But I was not allowed, you know, I didn't see who he was saying that to. And uh, I just knew Lucifer. He showed me Lucifer standing right there. So Lucifer was there when he said that. So then he advanced the scene. And he showed me, and God helped my, my memory, help me remember everything that he was saying. He advanced the scene and he showed me the Garden of Eden and Adam and Eve. And they was being tempted by... Um, Lucifer. I did not see Lucifer, but I knew they was being tempted. It said into my spirit, and I saw Adam and Eve from a great, great distance away. So um, I did not see their features well, and I remember that being something like, "Oh, I wish I, you know, I would have liked not wish. I don't believe in making wishes. I prayed. I prayed, and I said, "Oh God, I, I really would like to know what Eve looked like. I didn't say I wanted to see what Adam looked like, and honestly, because." I don't want to look at him and say, oh, he, he was so fine, you know. So I just say, okay, I wish, I mean, I wish. I pray to see what Eve looked like. And God actually showed me Eve um, months after that, I would say, maybe a month or two after I prayed that. Um, but anyway, uh, that's not the point of this video. But since I mentioned it, let me talk about what she looked like. Her skin was unlike any color I have ever seen in this world. I mean, it was brownish, reddish looking, but it, was, it wasn't like copper or any brownish, reddish uh, color I have ever seen. And she was flawlessly beautiful. Her skin looked like it was so soft. You could just look at her skin and tell it was extremely soft. And what I thought was odd about her is that it looked like she had on makeup but I don't believe she had on makeup because I believe that that is just how God made her face to look. And I think that the, the fallen, the angels that left heaven and um, introduced makeup to mankind, I think that they probably copied off the way that he looked from what I saw. Her teeth were uh, so white. It was all, it was blindingly white. That's how white her teeth were. 
like if you stare at her teeth, you could you could lose your eyesight with these eyes that we have today. And um, her face was perfectly, perfectly formed. Her hair was long, and it was almost the exact color as her skin. It was like, you know, and this is this is the best example that I, I've seen. I actually saw something that kind of looked uh, like her, and, and this is going to sound crazy, but it's true. Um, there are pictures of Nimrod. They said they found Nimrod's tomb. And Nimrod has his skin and his hair is almost the exact same color. When I, I, I didn't see that until this pictures of Nimrod. I'm not saying that they're true until after I saw the vision of Eve and I was like, wow, you know, that's how she looked like her hair was almost the exact same color as her skin. But, um, even the color that Nimrod was did not match the color of Eve. It was very similar though. So, I mean, if anyone goes and see that, I'm not saying that it's true. That's the closest I've ever seen to explain what she looked like. But anyway, um, she, she had, her eye shape was very odd. Um, looking at her eye shape, you can tell that every, every race could have came from those eyes. I mean, it, I've never seen eyes shaped like hers. The closest eyes I've, I've seen shaped like hers were the guy that played in uh, the Risen movie, which I also seen afterwards. And uh, the guy that starred in it, he was the military man that, um, Caiaphas, was it? No, 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 I forget his name in the movie, I'm sorry. But he starred in the movie, and his eyes have a very odd shape. Um, that's the closest, but it, even his eyes did not match the color, I mean, the shape of her eyes. But um, she had oddly shaped eyes. I can't, I can't draw, otherwise I would give you all a picture. And I saw her right before she ate of the fruit, and she was holding it in her hand. It was a giant-looking fruit. It was like an orange, orange, oranges red, like a, and also like a color I've never seen before. I can't even uh, give you all that color, but it was, it looked like it was a real juicy fruit, and the look on her face was, it was a wicked looking look. I mean, before she ate the fruit, she did no good and evil, but yet she had a wicked looking look on her, on her face. So anyway, when I saw her, I knew instantly that it was Eve. It was spoken into my spirit, but I'm gonna go on. Cause that's not part of this anyway so um so then i was advanced into a scene um, after he tempted adam and eve then i saw him getting kicked out of heaven and that is a really big thing for me because i like most christians i was thoroughly convinced that he was kicked out of heaven before he tempted adam and eve okay so when i saw that i was like what <laughs> but that is that is what I saw and I'm not gonna lie and make it up to um please people but I saw him get kicked out after afterwards. So anyway, um uh then I saw that and then he went to the to the earth, okay? Uh I mean well I, I just saw him getting kicked out I don't know where he went but I assume he went to the earth. But anyway, uh I saw another scene and I saw him working on the earth. Okay, he had a job. And I know that sounds crazy, but I'm just saying what I saw. Now, I don't know if he was, um, had taken over someone else's body, which is very, you know, it's called demon possession. The Bible talked about Judas and how Satan entered into him. Also, we know with Peter, Jesus rebuked, he rebuked Satan out of Peter, um, because Satan had went into Peter. So that is possible that that's what I saw. I mean, does he actually physically appear on the earth? No. I'm just going to say what I saw. What I saw, it was the same looking uh, Lucifer that I saw in heaven was the same looking Lucifer I saw working on the earth. And he had a job. Now, I don't know if I was seeing into, if he was in a person and I was seeing into his spirit or what, but it looked just like the Lucifer that I saw in heaven. Okay, and he was very evil looking and he had a very looking determination on his face. Like he was very, very determined. And the first time I saw him, um, me and Jesus was standing in back of what was his boss. He was not the big boss. So I found that interesting too. And he came into the office to speak to his boss about something. I don't know what they spoke about, 
but I can tell you that the um, office that he came into, the door, like the, okay, how can I explain it? You know, if you have an office at your job, you have a door, most likely. I'm not talking about a cubicle. You have a door, and you, you most likely have a wall, okay? The wall, instead of being a wall as we know of, it was complete glass, like from, from ceiling to floor, it was glass. And the only time I believe I have ever seen that is in a, um, a police, um, you know, some kind of police headquarters or CIA headquarters or FBI headquarters, something, something of the government is the only time I've ever can imagine seeing glass wall from top to bottom. You know, I had a, a office once, I had a glass window, but no, this was a glass wall from top to bottom. So anyway, um, uh, so I, I surmise he's working for the government, but that was not revealed to me. And I saw, I mean, okay, that whatever I saw, he was working for the government. Like I said, I don't know if he was inside of somebody or what, but anyway, he was not the big boss. And I knew that he had, I saw a scene after that. And it showed me, oh, yes, and also I knew what his boss was thinking. His boss was thinking he's very determined. He's a good worker. He's uh, he, he was always on time. He was always, you know, working hard on his job. And so um, then I saw you know, a scene of him. It looked like it was some kind of a party or something. And it, it might have been outside. I thought I saw, uh, I'm pretty sure I saw a bonfire of some sort, and then saw him inside somewhere, too. Like, in, maybe it was some kind of party and it was a bonfire outside, I would, would think. And he was talking to the people. The people there worked with him as well, and they all loved him. I mean, they, they, they loved him to pieces. They hung on his every word. And I knew instantly that what he was doing was he was manipulating. Like, he was telling them things that um, some of these people had jobs at the same level of him, and some had higher level jobs. And he would say something that was really planting the seed in them so they can do his evil biddings and whatever um, job that they had. Now, I'm going to be honest. Obama started a program called SPLC, which is supposed to um, uh, work on his Christian problem because he has claimed that Christians threaten the nation. And I did a video on that. Um, you can go see my is Obama the Antichrist um, video? And so I posted the proof of what I'm saying on that uh, in terms of what Obama has done. So anyway, what I saw was um, they were, you know, discussing things like, you know, different things. He was manipulating them in certain ways. And I knew for a fact that this was a yuppie, you know, a yuppie group. Like they were white. They were privileged. Um, I'm not going to say all of them was white, but the ones that I saw was white. Everyone I saw was white. And um, they were, um, you know, uppity, you know, having money, having brains, good on their job. I knew that for a fact. Um, they believed in equality with homosexuality. And um, they, you know, didn't have much regard for the homeless. And that brings me to my, my final scene that God showed me. I saw Lucifer come out of his work office, and actually, this might be before the party. See, that's why I crammed that up my memory. It might have been before the party. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Yeah, that was my last scene I saw. Thank you, God. So I saw him come out of the office where he worked at. It was a it was a building too, so I knew it was a building he was working at. It wasn't um just a you know one two story. This was a whole building. And when he came out, it was a homeless man, and he didn't even look at the homeless man, but God let me see what was in his th his thoughts. And he was like, he hated that man. He just hated him, and he wanted him dead, like he, he should die. You know, why is he alive? Why is he leaving? And he had no regard for homeless people at all. Okay, and so that's, that's all um, that God uh, showed me, and then that was the end of my, my vision with him. So I have a lot of takeaways about that um, that I am not going to discuss right now.
um, because I love the Lord. What he does is he'll give me a vision or he'll say something to me. Um, a lot of times he'll, he's came to me in the past and he'll give me one sentence, half a sentence, and he expects me to do the homework, okay? Um, there's a lot of biblical things that I can discuss about what I saw. Um, but I'm not going to do that because I don't want this video to be that long. But if God places it on my heart, I will do it. But it is more, more advanced um, for people who really know their Bible because that would be a huge Bible study to to discuss. And God help me if you want me to do that in the future. Um, but the biggest takeaway, the first thing that Jesus said is he said, Bethlehem and Judah have been warned of my coming, but they won't listen. Now, Judah is no longer in um, on the map, okay? Uh, we know where Judah would have been in the past. It would have been in the area of Egypt. Um, it would have been in parts of what we now call Israel. Um, and then Bethlehem, of course, is in Israel. Um, so is that what God is talking about? Um, I have some thoughts on that, but I'm not going to discuss that. Um, but that's what he said, so I need to make sure I, I get that across. In terms of everything he showed me about Lucifer, um, I think that mostly it was for to help me to get over my visitation to to, um, to hell, and it did help me because it just really reiterated how, how truly evil and despicable Satan is, and um, so that's why I have not discussed it because I thought you know it's not something that other people really need to to hear, but um, maybe it's.